Over recent years, it has become a trend on social media to visit the Paris catacombs to try and find secret chambers beneath the city. These are not your ordinary tourist videos, and these are not your typical tourists. Teenagers and documentary makers alike want to push themselves to go as deep as possible into the maze of pitch black tunnels that have been carved into the limestone beneath France's most famous city. So, before we delve into the spooky side of urban exploration, let's establish what the catacombs are and why they exist at all. The present day catacombs are classed as ossuaries, which hold the remains of more than six million people. But this was not always their purpose. In fact, the ossuary section is tiny compared to the full meandering network of tunnels. The original reason for the catacombs was the area's use as a limestone quarry. EGU Blogs is a division of the European Geosciences Union and they give us a good indication of what life was like for those early miners below ground. Paris, 2000 years ago. Claude is sweating all over. It's mid-July and the sun is burning on his skin. With his hammer and shovel, he is digging up grey and white stones. The faults and fractures in the rock help him get the pieces out easily. But still, it's hot and humid and his shift isn't over yet. Luckily, he can't complain about the view. Lutetia, one of the new Roman settlements, lies right in front of him on the left bank of the Seine River. 1300 years after these above-ground sites were established, in around the year 1321, the tunnels are already in use and they cause the workers no end of health issues. Pierre sighs out deeply. His back hurts, but he has to continue. In the small corridors of the underground quarries at Montreux, south of Paris, he is digging for gypsum and cutting limestone for building material. The quarries are narrow and low, so he has to bend over all the time. Mining gypsum is easier, it's a softer material. It's the limestone that makes him suffer. Then, in the 18th century, which was approximately 300 years ago, the disused quarry tunnels began to serve their new purpose, corpse storage. EGU blog remarks, Jean covers his mouth. The stench is unbearable. Over 12 generations of Parisians are buried at the cemetery of Les Innocents in the heart of Paris. Last week, the cellar of a house located below the cemetery collapsed under the weight of the buried. The king has decided to close all cemeteries within the city centre, and so the cemeteries are being emptied. Jean found a job in this chaos, pulling a wagon at night, from the cemetery to the entrance of the old abandoned quarries south of the city. A series of mine cave-ins, beginning in 1774, with the collapse of a house along the Rue d'Enfer, caused King Louis XVI to name a commission to investigate the state of the Parisian underground. This resulted in the creation of the Inspection Générale de Carrier, Inspection of Mines Service. They found that the cool, dark, numerous tunnels were a perfect solution to their overcrowding issues in the cemeteries. Mine consolidations were still occurring and the underground around the site of the collapse, the one that had initiated the project, had already become a series of stone and masonry inspection passageways that reinforced the streets above. The mine renovation and cemetery closures were both issues within the jurisdiction of the police prefect, Police Lieutenant General Alexandre Lenoir, who'd been directly involved in the creation of the Mine Inspection Service. Lenoir endorsed the idea of moving Parisian dead to the subterranean passageways that were renovated during 1782. In 1785, beginning from an opening ceremony on the 7th of April, the route between Les Innocents Cemetery and the Clos de Tumissoir became a nightly procession of black cloth-covered wagons carrying the millions of Parisian dead. It would take two years to empty the majority of Paris's cemeteries. 
Can you imagine the ghoulish sight, peeking out of your bedroom window as a child and seeing this nightmarish, slow-moving parade of black spectres pushing carts of rotting body parts and white bones? However, this exodus was not initially a religious or ceremonial removal of bodies from the cemeteries and graveyards. As we mentioned in our video, Funerals, Famous Graves and a Deadly Jewel, in the 1700s, the corpses within the grave usually held little to no sentimentality for the grieving families. Mortality rates were high at that time, and belief in life after death was very strong. This meant that when the families said goodbye to their loved ones at the coffin side within the church, they believed the soul had been released and the deceased person was ascending to heaven. There was rarely a time when the family would watch the coffin be lowered into a grave and cremation was not taking place at this point in France's history. The people of Paris understood that their loved one's coffin or body may be placed into a grave which was already three or four people deep. It was also commonplace for bones to be moved to make way for new corpses. And so, when bodies were being moved down to the old quarry tunnels, there was not an uproar because it simply made sense. A century later, in the Victorian era, things had changed. The funeral transition had taken place and now people valued the gravesite as a place of memorial and they wanted their loved ones to remain in situ. The catacombs in their first years were a disorganised bone repository, but Louis-Étienne Éricard de Thury, director of the Paris Mine Inspection Service from 1810, had renovations done that would transform the caverns into a visitable mausoleum. In addition to directing the stacking of skulls and femurs into the patterns seen in the catacombs today, he used the cemetery decorations he could find to complement the walls of bones. There was also a room dedicated to the display of various minerals found under Paris, and another showing various skeletal deformities which were found during the catacombs creation and renovation. He also added monumental tablets and archways bearing ominous warning inscriptions and designed stone tablets bearing descriptions or other comments about the nature of the ossuary. To ensure the safety of eventual visitors, it was walled off from the rest of Paris' left bank extensive tunnel network. So, how many miles of tunnels are there? Surely it can't be that hard to find your way if you have a map or use way markers for yourself. There are actually around 200 miles of disused tunnels under the city of Paris. This isn't some local rock mine abandoned after a few decades. This is the remains of mine shafts and galleries that were worked on for centuries. And so this is how we find the catacombs today. A visitor attraction made famous in Disney's Hunchback of Notre Dame movie a curiosity to be photographed like other European ossuaries. And yet, there is a darker side to these tunnels and caverns. This mysterious, grim aspect is usually what draws in the more adventurous and curious people to the area, despite most of the holes being blocked off. Where there's a will, there's a way. One of the first reported casualties was the Val de Grace hospital doorkeeper, Philibert Aspert, who was lost in the catacombs during 1793 and found 11 years later in 1804. He was the doorkeeper during the French Revolution. He entered the tunnels via a staircase at the back of the hospital courtyard, but nobody knows why he initially made the decision to enter them. His corpse was found in one of the galleries and he was buried where they found him on the floor. It is believed that he was able to be identified from the ring of hospital keys that were attached to his belt. 20 years later, in 1824, a double murder took place in the Paris catacombs that made it into the London Journal. We have a link to the article in our video description and there will be a full reading of the event released soon on our channel. In short, 
Alexandra Fraconard was courting a wealthy widow. He was a torchbearer for people who wanted to ramble through the catacombs. The widow and her daughter never emerged from their subterranean visit with him, and the next day, Fraconard fled Paris. More recently, in the 1990s, a short video was discovered of a man that had apparently ventured into the tunnels and has been missing ever since. The footage has not been authenticated, however, it is believed to have sparked a lot of interest in the modern urban exploration. One of the videos that shows just what it's like today was shot in 2017 and features a poorly prepared young man who wanted to test his metal. Unfortunately, as with many cases of dark tourism, he was scammed by a local person and the whole adventure could easily have turned out worse than it did. We have also left a link to this example in our video description and to another similar video, just to give you a scale of the whole site of the catacombs. These are only a couple of documented instances among hundreds, possibly thousands of visits that are made illegally to the sections of the catacombs that are outside of the visitor-friendly ossuary. The issue is that up until the 1830s, the whole network was free to roam in. Then, gradually, bit by bit, parts were closed off or caved in. As with other underground sites across the world, be they caves, sewers, subway stations, there is always some secrecy and legend that surrounds them. As this video is being released in October and Halloween is nearly upon us, we have also provided you with some links to more paranormal goings-on in case you'd like to explore the more spooky side of life beneath Paris. Whether you believe these wet, pitch-black tunnels are haunted by the souls of over 6 million dead Parisians, or whether you find the history and geology aspect of a location fascinating, what's sure is that the catacombs will keep attracting visitors for centuries to come.